Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you how to build an audio amplifier with a frequency response of up to 100 kHz. The circuit uses two UCT2030ICs in bridge mode, combined with power transistors. The output can reach 100 watt with an 8 ohm load and 200 watt with a 4 ohm load. Now, I'm going to test the frequency response of the circuit using the function generator and oscilloscope I have. On the right side of the screen is a signal generator with a frequency range from 1 Hz to 100 kHz. On the left side of the screen is the output of the amplifier, which is connected to an oscilloscope. I'll generate a sine wave with varying frequencies and we'll take a look at how well the circuit responds across the frequency range. As you can see, the circuit responds very well to signals ranging from 1 Hz to 100 kHz. I'll show you the detailed building process right after this short introduction to my partner, JLCPCB. JLCPCB provides easy, affordable, and reliable PCB and PCBA solutions, empowering electronics engineers to develop projects efficiently. With 19 years of PCB manufacturing expertise since 2006, running five cutting-edge, in-house factories and serving over 5.48 million engineers in 180 countries and regions. Order PCBS from JLCPCB effortlessly. Upload your Gerber file to get instant quote and order in minutes. It's as easy as online shopping. PCB customization, component sourcing, stencil manufacturing, and high-precision assembly all in one place. Get 1 to 8 layer PCBS for just $2, efficient large scale production reducing costs and bringing you unbeatable prices. Quality and lead time is reliable. All in house production, ensuring quality stability and strict quality control in every process. Rapid turnaround, lightning fast PCB production in just 24 hours. Don't miss JLC PCB 6 layer PCB special. Get $30 off with a coupon and enjoy top quality 6 layer PCBS for just $5. Plus, to you enig finish and no engineering fees for via and pad. This is the result after one week after I uploaded my Gerber files to JLCPCB. Overall, I'm really impressed with the build quality of this PCB. The edges are cleanly cut with no burrs or roughness, which indicates excellent CNC or V-cut control. The green solder mask is evenly applied and has a nice glossy finish, no smudges or color fading, which not only protects the board, but also enhances its appearance during assembly. The traces are sharp and precise with no signs of ink bleeding or overlaps. The white silkscreen is also clear and easy to read, even for small components. Technically, this is a two-layer board with fine vias and consistent trace spacing, making it suitable for control circuits or low-power designs. I also did a quick continuity check with a multimeter, and there were no shorts detected between nearby pads very reliable. This is the board after I've completed soldering some basic components, such as resistors, diodes, capacitors, and connectors dot dot. Although there aren't many components on the board at this stage, it's important to pay close attention to the values of each component, as well as the polarity of the capacitors and the orientation of the diodes. Make sure to double check everything carefully before moving on to the next steps. When it comes to capacitors, make sure to choose the best quality ones. The sound quality will significantly improve if you opt for high quality components, especially when it comes to audio circuits. I'm using the IC2030 to connect with the circuit. This is a common IC that you can easily find at most electronic component stores. I will be using two IC2030s in a bridge configuration for this circuit. This setup helps to increase the output power of the circuit, providing better performance and efficiency. I have some power transistors here, but before connecting them to the circuit, we need to test the circuit to ensure everything is working correctly. This step is crucial to avoid any damage to the transistors or other components. The IC2030 is a commonly used IC. Let's look at some circuits that we can work with this IC. This is the datasheet for the IC2030. 
and I've also shared it in the attached file feel free to download and check it out. There are many circuit applications using the IC2030. It can operate with either a single power supply or a dual power supply. You can connect it with external transistors to increase the output power or use it to build an audio amplifier circuit with separate bass, mid, and treble channels. Now I'm going to connect the jacks to supply power to the circuit, input the audio signal, and send the output signal to the speaker. I'll supply the circuit with a 15 volt power source, then generate a sine wave signal with a frequency range from 1 to 100 kHz. The output of the circuit will be connected to an oscilloscope so we can observe the waveform. Based on the oscilloscope readings, the circuit shows a very good frequency response. As the frequency changes from 1 to 100 kHz, the output signal remains quite stable. In practice, for audio amplifier circuits, the human hearing range is typically from 1 to 20 to kHz. So the fact that this circuit responds well up to 100 kHz is a very positive sign. After confirming that the circuit is working properly, we can now proceed to connect the power transistors. Make sure to use dedicated PNP and NPN transistors that are specifically designed for audio applications. Next, I'll solder the transistors onto the board. Pay close attention to the orientation and placement of each transistor there is a clear distinction between PNP and NPN types. If installed incorrectly, the circuit may not work properly or could even be damaged. I'll continue testing the circuit's performance after connecting the power transistors. The test will again use a signal generator with frequencies ranging from 1 to 100 kHz and an oscilloscope to observe the output waveform. At lower frequencies, the circuit responds very well. However, when the frequency reaches around 300 Hz, the waveform starts to distort and the peaks get clipped. This is likely due to insufficient power supply. I'll reduce the input level slightly to bring the waveform back to normal and then gradually increase the frequency again. I'll continue increasing the frequency and observe the results using the oscilloscope. From 80 kHz to 100 kHz, there is some minor distortion, but it's still within an acceptable range. I've just shown you how to build an audio amplifier circuit that operates in bridge mode. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more exciting electronics projects. See you in the next video.